emergency. Residents told to leave their homes as fire crews work to protect properties at Saltash. Three men with lone wolf links charged over the murder of a former Comanchero's boss. The world's fastest man touches down on Aussie soil, ready for his debut as a footballer. And tensions boil over as the Knights steal an upset win over the Panthers. This is NBN News with Jane Goldsmith. Good evening. A bushfire that's been burning for a number of days at Port Stephens took a turn for the worse today. Lemon Tree Passage Road was shut, leaving many people stranded and unsure if their properties were still standing. The wind was strong, the flames ferocious. Burning either side of Lemon Tree Passage Road, consuming kilometres of bushland. Black smoke covering the sky above, with a constant stream of emergency services racing along the only way in or out. But some wanted to stay put, this farmer doing what he could to keep his poultry safe. We've just got the sprinklers set up along the back fence, all down there. The action started mid this morning with fire jumping containment lines laid late last night along Oyster Cove Road. It didn't take long for the RFS to issue a watch and act, soon upgraded to emergency. It was too late to get out. Working from the sky, helicopters and planes doing their bit to control the chaos below. For people caught in the fire ground, it was an anxious wait. We were over there, so we've... we've been coming further back and further back as the fire got closer. Many more were caught outside along Nelson Bay Road, not knowing if their homes were still standing. The Lower Hunter Command Centre watching the fire's every move. Um, this is very unusual fire behaviour for this time of year. This coastal heath country, um, once it gets a bit of heat in it and a bit of wind behind it, it's very difficult to control. A summer's nightmare was a winter's day reality. A summer's nightmare was a winter's day reality. We'll go live now to NBN reporter Georgia Ma, who's on the fire ground at Tanilba Bay. Georgia, what's the latest? Well, Jane, the fire remains at an emergency level tonight for the Oyster Cove and Salt Ash areas. This afternoon, Lemon Tree Passage Road and Oyster Cove Roads were briefly open for traffic coming in and out of the area, but those roads have since been closed again. A southerly is expected to pick up any moment now, so the fire may move in the direction towards Tilbury. The RFS is urging everyone to enact their bushfire survival plans and stay up to date with any information that may come to hand. Strong winds are expected to go well into the evening and well into tomorrow, so it's no doubt going to be an anxious wait for many residents and firefighters alike. Back to you, Jane. Thank you, Georgia. Georgia Ma reporting live there from Port Stephens. It's the ultimate betrayal, with friends of former Comanchero boss Mick Howie among those charged today with his execution killing. But police don't believe his death had anything to do with a bikey war. Instead, it was money that motivated the murder. They were supposedly his mates, and six months ago, the man on the right was supporting Mick Howie's family at his funeral. His hands now cuffed and he, along with two lone wolf bikies, have been charged over the murder of the former Comanchero's boss. But today police revealed it wasn't McHowie's gang links that made him a marked man. It was money and a sour construction deal. His death was to prevent further money being paid to Mr Howie rather than any traditional outlaw motorcycle gang conflict. For use of Naglioglu and Ahmad Dada, their run of luck was up when they returned to a car park in Bexley yesterday. To a car park in Bexley yesterday. All these cops just came out and swarmed these two guys and they had their guns out, pointing to them, saying, get on the floor, you're under arrest for murder. Undercover officers were lying in wait for the alleged masterminds of the daylight execution. Oh, I just parked in front of them. Naglioglu is the accused hitman. Security vision shows a masked assassin charging towards Howie's Mercedes at Rockdale, pumping at least seven shots through the open window at point-blank range. It'll be alleged in court that Dowder hatched and oversaw the killing. 
The two people that we've charged yesterday will be alleging are the principals that actually conducted the murder. Both men, who are members of the Lone Wolf Bikie Gang, live at the exclusive Toaster building, which was raided at Circular Quay last night. The third man arrested was apparently a good friend of Mick Howie's, 37-year-old tow truck driver Mustafa Salame. He's been charged with being an accessory after the fact. Mick Howie's understood to have been owed hundreds of thousands of dollars, but whoever was indebted to him never intended to cough up. Police will allege that person paid less than 50 grand for the contract killing. Detectives are yet to find who funded the blood money, nor have they caught the getaway driver, but they're hoping his limp might give him away. Tiffany Genders, NBN News. There was a nasty surprise for police when they searched a car at Yurunga near Coffs Harbour, not only finding a sawn-off rifle and drugs, but a bomb as well. The discovery of an explosive device forced officers to call in the bomb squad to defuse it. A 30-year-old man was charged and will be in court on Monday. They've already been deeply affected by the fury of Mother Nature. Now survivors of the Lombok earthquake have been hit by a tornado. The column of dust sent debris swirling through an evacuation camp, hurling large pieces of bark through the air. Refugees watched on from their tents. No one was injured. A police officer is never off duty, and a senior sergeant from Sydney's West has learnt that the hard way stabbed at a family celebration. The officer was trying to break up a brawl involving gate crashes when one of the teenagers allegedly pulled out a knife. A sweet 16 turns sour and an off-duty police officer is left bleeding in the middle of a road at Bonnie Rick Heights. We didn't think it was to that extent. We thought maybe a fight. Yeah, not a stabbing. It's scary. Very scary. Senior Sergeant Branko Markovic was celebrating his niece's birthday when gate crashers started brawling. It was like a little fight at the beginning because of gate crashes and then it got out of hand. Fist flew when the father of three stepped in to help, chasing the unwanted guests into the street. As he grabbed one of the teens, they allegedly pulled out a knife and stabbed him in the stomach. It was a very brave act. To not only put himself um, off duty in, in the line in, in danger, but um, after he was stabbed, to maintain hold of the offender. The officer today underwent emergency surgery. He's expected to make a full recovery. As a police officer, we're on duty 24/7, and the public expect us to do our duty. And, and this officer is very lucky that he didn't um, suffer a more serious injury as a result of the stabbing. A 17-year-old boy is tonight still being questioned by police. It's Hales, the transport of the future. And today, University of Newcastle students got a first-hand look at vehicles powered by the sun. Dozens of students helped to build some solar-powered cars on a smaller scale. They're thinking big about the small stuff. Young innovators putting sun power to the ultimate test. <laughs> 